Good morning, everybody. Good to see everybody here today. Want to welcome everybody that made it to our combined service, our 10 o'clock service here in Bluffton, and just want to greet everybody. And it is Father's Day, amen. So happy Father's Day, everybody. Want to greet everybody that's watching online. Happy Father's Day to you as well, amen. For those of you who couldn't be here today, we greet you as well. We love you. And so, amen. Well, it is happy, uh, happy, awesome, happy Father's Day today. Uh, I can't say it enough because my wife and my kids, they brought me a bag and I had some stuff in the bag. And so, amen. So, I've been having a good Father's Day already. Amen. So just want to make one announcement real quick. The Wealth with God series, the links have been sent out. So you should have your link if you signed up for Wealth with God series. So check your email. Check your spam because we sent it out to the, the emails that we had when you signed up for it. And there will be one per household so make sure you check both emails if you have two emails, amen? Because uh, uh, Forgiven Church has paid for those uh, for you to have, and we don't want it to go to waste, so we want to make sure uh, that you get uh, your link for the Wealth with God series, amen? How, how many of you appreciate that series? It's an awesome, awesome series, amen? And I believe it will help us a lot to go to a next level financially here at Forgiven Church, amen? Amen. All right, well, before we go any further, we just want to greet our very own Pastor Scott, our father of the house, and we just want to wish you a very happy Father's Day this morning. Uh, it is, uh, amen. And we got some things we want to do for you. So uh, do you have those goggles and that chair and all that stuff? No, I'm just kidding. Sometimes we play <laughs> games with people. That <laughs> so no, we're not going to do that. We're going to be real nice. But uh, we got a video that we're going to play uh, for you, Pastor Scott, for Father's Day. And so uh, uh, we got a couple of things that we're going to do. So just, just want to go ahead and uh, actually, I'll stop talking. We'll go ahead and start the video. How do you say thank you to someone who has greatly impacted your life? And how do you do justice in recognizing and honoring someone who has been a constant in your life? Someone who has prayed for you and watched you grow into the person God intended you to be from the very beginning. Someone who has pushed you to be better than you were yesterday. Someone who could see your potential, value, and worth, even when you couldn't. That's someone who helped you reach deep inside and pull out all that God has placed within you. This is the challenge we faced. You have improved our lives so much that it is a challenge to return that to you. But you have always taught us never to shy away from a challenge. And so, here it goes. For all the times you have prayed with us and for us. For all the times you have positioned yourself in front of us to see farther than we can. So you can take the brunt of the upcoming attack to protect us the best you can. Thank you. For all the times you fought for us, supported us, and stood next to us in the good times and the hard times. For all the times you never gave up on us, no matter how long it took or how dark it looked. Thank you very much, Pastor Scott. For all the times you have encouraged us to have fun, to take time to relax and to refresh. For all the times you have showed us that it is okay to enjoy life and to enjoy God's goodness. Thank you. Your feet really stink. Shoot, do it again. For all the times you've led by example, for all the times you've shown us what it means to be a godly husband and father, to be submitted to God, and to love our families like Jesus. For that, I thank you. For all the times God has used you in our lives to bring us wisdom, to correct us, and to get us back on track when we behave foolishly. For all the times you've helped us to see our potential and to discover the gifts God placed within us and to use those gifts to build God's kingdom. Thank you. For all the times you've challenged us to never settle, that we can always improve, for all the times that you've helped us win the battles, and all the times you've encouraged us to keep going when we weren't sure we would make it. Thank you. So there you go. There's the end of our video. But we hope that you felt like it was a tribute to who you are in our life. We hope we made you smile. We hope we made you laugh a little bit. 
But more than anything else, we hope that we showed you how much we love you, how much we appreciate you. Thank you so much, Pastor Scott, for loving us so well, caring for us so well these past 23 years. You have been faithful. You have been consistent. You have been available. You have been sacrificial, and we have noticed it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Father's Day. Amen. And now we have another video we're going to play for somebody who couldn't be here today. So go ahead and play the video. I hope you can hear me. Um, this is Warren. Pastor, I just want to thank you for how much you've been a father figure in my life. Genuinely thank you. Um, you've mentored and coached many of us, including me. And I really appreciate that. Thank you for being there for me, with me in the toughest of fights. You tell us what we needed to hear and never just what we wanted to hear. That's a true father figure. Thank you. I love you as well as the rest of the church family there. And I miss you. Happy Father's Day, Pastor. I want to read a scripture. I didn't, uh, we're not going to put it up. I just want to read 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. The Bible says, For though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. That is still true today. There's a lot of instructors out there, but a father is something that's priceless. It's something that's not as common. There's a big difference between an instructor and a pastor. You know, an instructor can instruct us on things, but a pastor can impart wisdom. Amen? A pastor has the ability to anoint and to empower us. And so, um, on this Father's Day, I do not want to take for granted the man that we have here, our spiritual father. I know personally that you have impacted me in many, many ways the last 20 years, and I'm still learning. And so I want to thank you for being honest with me, uh, for handling the hard stuff with me, going there with me. I appreciate that. Um, that's what it's all about. If I'm going to go further, I have to have spiritual parents that speak into my life. Amen? And so I'm thankful for that. I mean, just, what was it, uh, Thursday? Well, no, I think it was, yeah, it was Thursday at the office. You know, Pastor Scott came over and he, he took the time to instruct me and teach me on something that I was not doing right. And I never, I never realized it. But when he pointed it out, it's like, yeah, that is absolutely true. And it totally changed how I was doing what I was, and I ain't going to tell you what it was. <laughs> That's for me to know. That's between me and him. But I just really thank you for all of that. You are absolutely awesome. They don't get any better than you. Uh, so uh, I just want to say happy Father's Day to you. And I want to say on behalf of the church here at Forgiven Church, uh, thank you for keeping things steady. On course. Uh, thank you for taking your place as the head and having a heart for your people, and praying for us, and encouraging us, and believing God with us. Those are things that we just cannot get anywhere else. And so we are very, very grateful to you, Pastor Scott. So happy Father's Day to you, sir. It's an honor to have you as our spiritual father in, uh, here at Forgiven Church. 
And so uh, we have some cards for you. So there you go. Some Father's Day cards. We love you. I know when Tina Turner sang that song, she was talking to her boyfriend. But she said, you're simply the best. <laughs> well, you're simply the best. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. Well, uh, how many of you are ready to get in the Word? Yeah. Amen. I'm excited for the Word. I'll tell you what. Let's do the faith quote. So if you have a Bible, iPad, whatever you got your Bible on, stand up. Hold it up high. Amen. It's the Word of God. Amen. Say this with me. This is my Bible. And I believe it was written for me to understand and agree with. I am what it says I am. Set free from all the power of the enemy. I will do what it says to do. And I will see that it is reality. Amen. 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 Yeah, greet a couple of people on your way down. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, uh, we have a very special word today uh, from a very special lady. Amen. And so the first lady of the house is going to minister today. Uh, isn't that awesome? Thanks, man. Yep. So help us welcome Pastor Michelle. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for the word. I thank you so much for what you have done. Yeah, I am. In our life. Thank you so much for what you're doing today. God, what you've started by your spirit. We thank you so much for every person that uh, counts themselves as part of Forgiven Church, God. Those, those that have connected themselves here, we thank you that your blessing is just on their life. God, that your overflow is on their life. The joy of the Lord is their strength this morning. Father, we thank you that by your spirit you moved this morning and you began to do good works in people and you're faithful to complete that which you began this morning in everybody's life. And we, we thank you that we will see the fruition of whatever it was you started this morning. Thank you for testimonies upon testimonies in this place. God, that it wasn't just a time in your presence to just feel something, but God, it was a time in your presence to be changed by you and have it impact our life for real. We thank you, God, for all that you're doing right now. We thank you for the word this morning, the supernatural word of the Lord. God, we just yield to you. Holy Spirit, you have told us that you are the helper. You are the teacher. You are the instructor. You're the one that takes what we hear from the Father and, and Jesus, and you reveal it to us. And so this morning we call on you, teacher, to be the instructor in this house and to say what it is that heaven wants said this morning. I just open my mouth and I say, Holy Spirit, you teach. You instruct. You help us. You give us exactly what we need this morning. We'll be sure to give you, Father, all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, happy Father's Day, Amen. sweetheart. Thank you, Lord. Do you want me to fix it? Is it bothering you? Right here, like grab. He'll tell me. Amen. If you can't hear it online, you should have been here. I don't know. So um, yesterday, Pastor asked me. He said. Um, he asked. I don't know. I think two weeks ago, he asked me to minister today, and I told him. I said, first of all, I'm not ministering on fathers. He's like. Okay, so that's not happening. Um, but I told him, I said, I think I know what I'm going to minister on. I told him this a couple weeks ago. And then last Sunday during church, he was talking about something. I thought, mm-hmm. So I'm taking notes. I thought I have something that's going to just follow right in line with that. And so all week, that's kind of what I was thinking. Well, then Holy Spirit and I started hanging out a little bit more and spending a little more diligent, specific time on today. And he dropped into my spirit, kind of like what I was praying, is that he is the teacher, and sometimes we can get so caught up in our own notes and our own outline, our own plan, that we lose him completely. And so I felt like this morning the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, don't go in with all your notes. Don't go in with your agenda. Just go in and let me minister. 
so he asked me yesterday, he said, so what are you going to teach on? I'm like, I have a scripture. I have one. He's like, yeah, but what's the topic? What's the theme? I have one scripture, and we'll see. So uh, I got up this morning early. Well, yesterday, actually, I've gone through this like five times. I have preached myself happy all the last couple of days because when he gave me one scripture and I started preaching in my living room, poor little Willow, I mean, she's just so strong in the spirit right now. I have preached to her in blue all week. Man, they are strong and mighty in the Lord. Amen. Because faith comes by hearing. And, and, and blue is powerful in Jesus' name. You know, you have to call things that be not. If you know blue, he's not. But hallelujah, the word works. And um, he's bold in Jesus' name. So I have spent the last couple of days preaching to myself. And what's funny is when I start with the one verse, by the time I'm at the end of it, Holy Spirit has taught me five different messages off of one verse. And so, like I said, we'll see what happens today. I kind of have an idea, but we're just going to let him. And so I th- this morning I got up about 4.30 and I'm throwing down a couple little notes here and there, but we're just going to let him go ahead. Okay. Amen. Amen. So just pray for me this morning. Amen. So go with me to Isaiah 53. Let's go to Isaiah 53. And I just want to start with this one verse and we're just going to let Holy Spirit just roam around in our business this morning and just do what he wants to do because it's his house, it's his vision, it's his ministry, it's it's the plan before the foundation of the world. Forgiven church is not our goal, it's not our plan, it's God's. And so we want what the Lord has for us at any given moment. We don't want what the pastor has. Because he's just a man. I'm just a woman. We want what the Spirit of God wants, right? Because that's what changes our life. Man-made crap isn't going to do anything for you and me. But God's stuff will change everything. And so look at this in Isaiah 53, verse 1. It says, who has believed our message? That's the NLT. Who has believed our message? Who has believed the message? See, Pastor Scott has been teaching about the place of grace since the beginning of the year. He's been talking about the place of grace. He's been laying down the foundation of the place of grace. He's been ministering it to us. And Holy Spirit has a question this morning. Who believes the message? Who believes the message? See, because there's power in believing. There's not just power in hearing. There's not just power in showing up. There's not just power in being here, but there's power in believing something. Your power comes from what you believe. Holy Spirit says, who has believed the message? See, you and I have to make that decision for ourselves. Am I going to believe the message? Am I going to believe the word? Am I going to stand no matter what comes? Am I going to move over on the side of God this morning or every day or every Sunday and believe what I hear? Am I going to be one of the few that having done all to stand, I decide I'm going to stand there for and I'm going to see the word of God come to pass in my life. See, I can't make that decision for you. Your spouse cannot decide to believe for you. No one can believe for you, but you must decide that this is not the word of the pastor. This is not the word of forgiven church. This is not the theme that the pastor just came up with this year. This is not the word of your favorite preacher. Your favorite prophet, your favorite evangelist, your favorite whoever that you all follow and we all follow. No, we have to decide if we're going to believe this message as the truth of what it is, the word of God, the word of God. We make that decision in our life, what we're going to stand on, what we're going to press into, what we're going to let work in our life. No one can do that for you, but every one of us will have to come to a point where we're going to make a decision that as for me and my I will serve the Lord. As for me and my future, I will believe the report of the Lord. As for me, and from here on out, the message is God's message to me. You and I have to decide if we will believe the message, if we will believe the good news, if we will believe the good tidings of great joy that came to all the earth. You have to decide whether that's a real message to you or not. We think we can sit in seats week after week after week and change our lives. Not if we don't believe nothing. 
You can sit in a seat for the rest of your life and end up in hell if you want to. Right. But the only thing that's going to make an impact in your world is what you choose to believe. Because once you believe it, you're going to step out and respond to it. Right. And until you believe it, you will not respond to it. See, there's many in here that have heard the place of grace and your life looks the same as it did six months ago. You fight things the same way you did six months ago. You believe for things the same way you did six months ago. You handle life the same way you did six months ago. What does that tell you? It tells you you have not believed the message. You have not believed the message. You've heard it, and we've taken notes on it, and we've highlighted it, and we've put references in it, but we have not taken the word and believed the word. He said, who has believed our report? See, Isaiah was inspired by the Spirit of God when he wrote this because in Isaiah 52, it talked about Jesus and it talked about what he was going to go through and it talked about the torment that he was going to go through and what he was going to look like and what he was going to endure for you and for me. And then right before uh, the Holy Spirit decides to explain the cross and explain the plan, see, some things are going to be too hard to believe. Some things are going to be too hard to grab a hold of first time. Some things are going to butt up against our religion and our experience and our friend's opinion and our experiences in life and what we've been taught and our knowledge and our understanding and what we want. Sometimes the message is going to bump up against that and we're not going to be able to believe. And so Holy Spirit says right in the middle of telling what Jesus was about and what Jesus is going to do for you and for me, I need to find out who is prepared to believe this message. Who is setting themselves in a place to believe this message above all other things and all other voices and all other stories and all other experiences? Who is willing to stand when no one else will stand with you? Because God says, I'm getting ready to tell you something that's going to be too hard to believe for some people. But all the things that will happen in your life and my life, if we will dare to believe the message, if we will dare to step over from our doubt and unbelief and foolishness and move on over into the supernatural where God lives and exists and moves where I have my being, if we would dare step over to where God is getting ready to go in Isaiah, our whole life would be transformed. He wants to know who this morning and any morning is willing to let Holy Spirit into those places you won't let nobody into. Those areas you refuse to believe because what you're hearing contradicts what you're feeling and you don't want anyone in there. He said, who is going to believe the report that I am getting ready to tell you. Who is going to step over and agree with what I say? Who is going to dare to say, if God said it, I believe it. If God spoke it, he'll bring it to pass. If God said it, he meant it for me, for me. If no one in my world walks in the truth of it, I will walk in the truth of it because I choose to believe the message. And if I believe, God will do something for me. See, you hear people say stuff like, you know, spiritual growth, it's different. You know, you can, be, you can be older spiritually and be young in the Lord. That's exactly right. You can be further advanced than your spouse spiritually. So you don't have to do everything as a team. It's not like, well, if you go, I'll go. If you believe, I'll believe. You believe. You step out. You know, if more of us would step out and believe the message, there would be less dead churches in America. There would be less people running back to the world. There would be less people dabbling in witchcraft and black magic and Wicca and all this crap because they're looking for power. If the church would rise up and believe the message of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, there would be more life in the house of God. Mm -hmm. There would be a lot more life 
It'd be a lot more exciting to serve God if we actually believed what he said. Because once we believe, he steps into that. See, it says, who has believed our message and to whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? The King James says, and who is the arm of the Lord revealed to? And who is the arm of the Lord? The arm of the Lord talks about the power, the power. It says, who has believed our message? And to whom is the Lord revealed his powerful arm? See, God has power, and his power is wrapped up in his message. And he said, who has believed the message? And to who will I reveal my power to? To those that choose to believe the message. To those that choose to believe the message, God will reveal his power to those that believe the message. Amen. People say stuff, well, I know someone that believed the word and it didn't work for them. No, you don't. Yeah. That's right. Your religion will tell you you did. You want to fight me right now, some of you over it. But I'm just telling you, God reveals his power to those that believe the message. If there was believing, his power was revealed. If his power was not revealed, they were not believing. Yeah, some of you don't like that much, and I don't care. Amen. I don't care. The power of God is revealed. See, there are some things that are going to be so hard to believe, but if you and I want to walk in the power of God and change our lives, we have got to decide to stop playing church, stop playing with our notes, stop playing with our Bible, stop playing in our prayer time, stop playing in our worship time, and just decide that it is true, it is real, the message is working for us, and God's power is getting ready to shoot out in every area of my life. His healing can come into your world, I'm telling you. His breakthrough his salvation, his restoration, his wholeness, his healing will come into your life if you will just decide that it is the message of God and not the message of man because the power of God is there to change anything and to change everything in your world. People say it's too good to be true. No, God is too good to be true, but he's still true. He's still true. The message is true. Who, who, who? See, Jesus is the power of God. He is the word of God. He is looking for someone. Second Corinthians says to us, 16.9, Second Corinthians, or Chronicles 16.9 says, the eyes of the Lord are running to and fro throughout the whole earth. He's looking to show himself strong on behalf of somebody. Somebody who believes his message. The eyes of the Lord are running around looking this morning for someone who will get a hold of one promise and believe it as a message given to them by him so that he can get involved in your life and strengthen your life and pour power into your life. You've got to believe before you'll ever get the power of God in your life. He said, I'm looking for someone that will believe, that will believe the word of God and the power of God. So you consider because we're faith people, we're, we're a faith church. And so, you know what? It's something we've heard before. Yep, amen. But you know what? Just because there's a multitude in the same place doesn't mean the multitude are believing, right? Yeah. That's right. Just because you hear a certain message time and time and time again, or you've been here a long time, doesn't mean you believe right. Right. <laughs> You say, well, it's a simple message, and I know the message. No, no, knowing the message and believing the message is two different things because Jesus said if you believe the message, the power of God will be revealed in your life. When is the last time the power of God was revealed in your life? When was the last time the power of God was revealed in your life? Saying amen will not bring God on the scene. The centurion said to God, speak the word only and my servant will be healed. You don't need to come into my house. I don't need you to anoint me. I don't need you to give me a certain scripture. I don't have to go to a certain prophetic conference. I don't have to follow a certain ministry. Just speak the word only and healing will come into my home. He said he believed the report. The nobleman in John 4, he came and he said, Jesus, come and heal my son. And Jesus said, unless you see signs and wonders, you won't believe. 
And then he says, go on, your son will be fine. And then the Bible says in John 4, it says, and the man believed what Jesus said. The man believed what Jesus said, and his son was healed. The power of God comes when we believe the report. Whatever you need this morning, you find the promise, you believe the message, and the power will be revealed in your life. It's very simple. Do you want to fix it? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hallelujah. You might expect. Amen. <laughs> Power of God in your life. Good thing we're not in some other country. Some of the stuff they wear is good. Okay. Amen. Speak the word only. Do you remember Samuel? It said when the Lord spoke to him, he, he got up and he said, Speak, Lord, for your servant. He's listening. Lord, speak into our heart because we're listening. The power of God is in the word of God, the message of God. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel, the message of the Lord Jesus Christ, because it is the power of God unto salvation, sozo, healing, deliverance, security, safety, the word of God. Not the word of your favorite minister. The church is really good at quoting brother so-and-so. Pastor so-and-so, the guy with the big following on Instagram and Facebook with the chains. And, you know, we're really good at quoting him and her. Yeah. But their message has no power. Their message cannot change your life. Their message stimulates your flesh a little bit, but it will not step into your world and bring you wholeness. Right. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ because it is the power of God. Do you know there's going to be times that you and I decide to believe the message that people are going to persecute us over it. And some people don't want to lose friends. And some people don't want to lose family. They would rather keep their garbage and all the hell in their life. They would rather stay the same than to embrace the power of God that will change their life because their friends mean more to them. Those that live righteously those that choose to believe the report of the Lord, those that step out on the message of the gospel and refuse to budge, refuse to move, refuse to give in or give up, they shall be persecuted. Welcome to believing the message. People say, you guys are weird. You guys are so extreme. You believe the Bible is true. You believe every word. You're one of those name it, claim it, those faith charismatic people. Yes. Yes. This is true. God meant what he said. It has worked in my life. If you think you're going to talk me out of believing God's message, you are too late. Call me names. I've already lost friends. Make fun of our walk. I've already lost family. Yeah. <laughs> Those that live righteously shall be persecuted. He said, who will we reveal our power to? 
the arm of the Lord. I said it talks about his power. It talks about his strength. The strength of God comes through the word of God, not just through a song, not just through your friends, not just through a church you belong to, not just through your attendance. No, the word of God brings strength into your life. Amen. It is the word of God that brings strength. And to who will this arm of the Lord be revealed? It means to be uncovered. Who will I uncover my power to? Who will I reveal my power to? Who will I remove all barriers so they can discover it? Hmm. God wants you and I to discover the power that's in his word. The power. That's in his word. See, God has a plan for your life. And I know if you've been here for any length of time, people think, well, yeah, I know that. You know, I've heard God has a plan for my life. But you have to believe the message. You say, God has a plan for my life, but nothing's happening in my life. Nothing great happens in my life. Everybody else gets all the advantages. Everybody else gets all the breakthroughs. Everybody else is just running free in God, and here I am. You must believe right. the message. Right. You must believe that what he says in Isaiah 53, that Jesus did that for you. Right. See, the cross in Isaiah 53 is not about everyone but you. That was a plan of God before the foundation of the world because of you. Not exempt from you, not accept you, because of you. Jesus said that he said the reason he hung on the cross and endured the shame and despised the whole thing was for the joy that was set before him because he believed the message of the Father and it caused him to endure for you. Amen. See, you didn't seek Jesus. He sought you. Right. You didn't make a plan for your life and then try to include Jesus. No, God made a plan for your life and it included you. You didn't want God. God wanted you. You didn't chase him down. He chased you down. You didn't woo him by your spirit. He wooed you by his. Amen. You didn't want him. He wanted you. And Isaiah 53 is all about how much he wanted you. Because there's power in his plan for your life. There's power in his plan for your life. Power to change everything. Power to change anything. Power to put you over the top. Do you know whose idea it was for you to prosper and be in health? His. Do you know whose idea it was for you to be the head and not the tail, above only, not beneath, first and never last? His. Amen. Do you know whose idea it was to anoint your hands to prosper and everything that you touch would prosper? Who came up with that? Him. Amen. Everything he did was because of you. See, some people sit here and think, I'm nothing and I'm no good and I'm unworthy. And God would do it for them and who am I? And I've screwed up and I've messed up. And if you only knew my past, and sometimes we even joke about it. It's not funny. Our past without Jesus is not funny. But it is forgivable. And it is redeemable. And it is lovable by a master and a savior that sought you out and said, I have a plan for your life. You've been born, Esther said, for such a time as this. Could it be that when God says you've been born for such a time as this, he meant that? Right. <laughs> he said, there's power in my word. There's power in my word. There's power in my word to reveal myself to you. And then God goes on to talk about his word in Isaiah 55. 
And he says, he talks about, he said, my word is so powerful. He said, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts. Come on. My ways are beyond anything you could come up with or imagine. But just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are beyond your thoughts and the natural. You can never come up with it on your own. Oh, but God said, just like the rain comes and it waters the ground and it makes the ground produce. Every time the rain comes and it's allowed to do its job, it will produce. He says every time the rain comes, it causes the grain to grow. It causes water on the dry ground. It produces seed and fruit for the farmer. It takes care of hunger. He said, every time the water comes, and then he says, and so shall my word be. So shall my word be. I send it out, and it always produces fruit. It always produces fruit it always produces fruit my words will always produce fruit everywhere that my word goes and somebody gets a hold of my word and believes the message in my word there's power in that word to produce the fruit in that promise if somebody would just dare to get over on the side of God and make a decision that they will believe God said it will produce. It will produce. Don't tell me you work the word and the word don't work. The word always works if you believe the word. Amen. The Bible says that he has exalted his word and his name above everything else. Above all other things, he's exalted his word because his word works. It bears fruit every time in your life. It will accomplish all I want it to. Do you know the Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie? Or the son of man that he should repent? If he said it, he will do it. If he spoke it, he will bring it to pass. He said, my word will go out and it'll do everything I tell it to do. If you and I will just make a decision that we believe the word. And it says it will prosper everywhere I send it to prosper. It will prosper. It will work. It will produce. It will change things. It will rearrange things. We sang this morning that God, when you come in the room, you change the atmosphere. That is the truth of the message of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change the atmosphere of your life. He will change it. But he won't make you believe it. You say, well, I've been here all this time. I've been here for six months listening to grace and nothing's worked in my life. I don't know what to tell you except the word works. See, it's all in what you decide to do when you hear the word. If you just sit bored like some people do week after week after week and you know you're not impressing them much because they know all things, apparently. See, doing that is not going to change anything. You know, I, I, I know and I understand it's this new technology and it's this new generation, but carrying the phones... I liked it when we all had Bibles. I liked it when we all had Bibles and we would go to church and we would sit down and the pastor would say, go to Hebrews, go to Psalms, go to Ecclesiastes, go back to Leviticus, and you knew where it was. (laughs) It almost forced you to spend more time in it because you had to look it up and memorize. You had to get to know it. You know what I'm saying? And we have this whole generation now, and some of us old ones have caught on to this new fad of you just carry your phone with you. Mm-hmm. Because all you have to do is say, go to Psalm. Psalm 139, verse 2. Oh, there it is. The Bible says to study, mm-hmm. to show yourself approved. Mm-hmm. Not Google. 
I really feel bad for the next generation who doesn't know their way around a Bible because you know what? All we need is someone to come in and blow out all of our power grids and all of our electricity and all of our access to the Internet. And then where are they all going to be when they can't find Jesus? And they can't find that promise. And they can't find the power. See, some of us parents, we've allowed it to happen, and I think we need to get a hold of their phones and put their nose back in the Bible so they can find their way around the pages just like old-fashioned, old-school ideas. I know it's a little outdated, but, hey, it works. Amen. We ought to be here on a Sunday, and everyone ought to have their Bible open. Because we're not in a theater. We're not here to be entertained. We're here to be changed by the power of the word of God. Who has believed the message? Who will God reveal his power to? See, it just all depends on what you choose to believe because the majority is not always right, contrary to what people say. Right. You think about the Old Testament when the Israelites were led out of Egypt and they were taken out into the wilderness. God brought them out of the world to take them into their promise. And he gave them all the same message. He preached the same message to all of them. Here is the promised land, flowing with milk and honey. Anything you could want, anything you could need, anything your hearts desire, I have given unto you. Just go in and grab a hold of it. And the Bible says out of three million people, two, two believed the report. Two believed the word of God. Two walked into the promised land. And the Bible said that they had a different spirit about them. The spirit of faith. The spirit of believing. The spirit of daring to step out on the word of God and making the supernatural come into their natural realm. Mm -hmm. Some of us have never seen a miracle is because we have never believed the message. Some of us have a lot of good notes with no faith attached. Some people sitting here are upset and offended because other people are getting answers from God and you're mad because you feel left out. Well, let me give you another part of the message. God is no respecter of persons. That's right. That's right. And what he's done for one, he will do for you. Some of us come in and we lift our hands and worship with no believing or expectation attached. We honestly don't believe anything's going to happen. That's why some of us can skip church so easily without any kind of conviction or pull or nudge because we don't think anything's going to happen anyway. And then other people will walk in here and the band screws up and the lyrics are wrong and the pads are in the wrong key and the mic goes off and yet they'll be on their face crying out to a holy God because their heart was, God, I believe you're there because you said we're two or three are gathered together. Mm -hmm. You would be there in the midst of them. Mm -hmm. God said, according to your faith, according to what you believe, it will be done unto you. Thank you, Jesus. According to what you and I believe.
I just want to wait on Holy Spirit just a second. Just a second. has so many great things. Just close your eyes. Just close your eyes. Holy Spirit, just stir up our believing this morning. We just break through. We just rebuke any kind of religious spirit in the name of Jesus, just thoughts that we, we know everything and we have arrived. God, we just speak against any of that right now in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for the elementary things to be brought back to our attention again. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you just move across this atmosphere right now and speak to every person. I don't want anybody talking to nobody. Just sit with your eyes closed. If it's uncomfortable, it's uncomfortable. It's okay. I just want you to tune into Holy Spirit right now. See, because he says, who has believed our report? Can we find anybody that will believe the report enough to stand if all hell comes against you, if everybody walked away from you, if you were left by yourself, are you solid? Do you know that you know that you believe the report not because of the church you go to, not because someone prophesied over you, not because someone made you feel good one time, but you know that you know because you've been in the presence of the Holy Spirit of God and he's real and he's alive and he has plans for your life and he wants to get you over into those plans. He wants to bump you into your prosperity. He wants to bump you up to your next level. He wants to bump you up into the plan of God for your life. But you have got to believe the report first. God, show us our hearts this morning. God, show us our hearts this morning. Come on, just pray in the spirit. If you pray in the spirit, I just want you to pray in the spirit a minute. Come on, just lift your voice. Spirit filled church. Hey, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you just move across this atmosphere right now. Thank you that you bring your conviction, God, that you bring everything that, about who you are into this atmosphere right now this morning. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do in this house this morning. God, we want the world to look at us and say they can tell we've been with Jesus. They can tell we have been with Jesus. Be glorified in our life, God. Be glorified in our life, God. Help us to believe. Help us to believe. Help us to believe, God. We believe. Help our unbelief. God, we don't want to be the same. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. God, 
God, we worship you. God, we thank you. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit. just want to read the word because some of you are challenged with this of what just happened when she said you know we're a spirit filled church if you speak in tongues speak in tongues pray in the spirit and some of you don't and it ties right in with the message that was just spoken today in Mark 16 15 he said and he said to them go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation and whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. And it says this, in my name they will drive out demons. And then it says, and they will speak with new tongues. End of discussion. That's talking about your own personal prayer language. That's what you were here. If you've never heard that before, you've never experienced that before, that's exactly what was going on. With some, that's your own personal prayer language. And he said, if you are a believer, this should be in your life if you believe. Why does it not happen for some people? Because you don't believe it. Though it's God's will for every single Christian. And of course, I can prove that in Scripture. You guys know that. Every single person that claims to be a Christian, he said, this shall be followed in your life. I know most denominations go against that because they take one scripture out of context and they don't know what they're talking about. But I'm here to tell you, God knows what he's talking about. Who will believe the message? So I challenge you today, if, you, if, you've, if you've been saying, oh, I've been trusting God, or I've been believing God, or I think it's for me, or whatever, believe that the prayer language is for you. What is it specifically? It's a direct line from your spirit to him, which no devil, no anything can interrupt. It is the, the Bible says it is the perfect prayer language. Perfect. Don't know what to say to God? Your spirit does. And I want to encourage you today, if you have not received that because of unbelief, I encourage you to receive that today. Is that okay? Can we do that? So let me just do that. Let me just agree with anybody in this place today. If you're in this place today and you said, Pastor, I've, I've never been taught that, I've never experienced it, I've never seen it, I really don't believe it, I don't think it's for everybody, I'm here to tell you you've been believing a lie. I'm here to tell you, the Bible says that these signs will follow those who believe. And it says, they will speak in new tongues. There are benefits for it. I'm not going to go over all the benefits right now. All I'm here to tell you is the good father will never give you something that's not good for you. Never, never, never. Tongues are for your benefit. And God wants every person, every person even watching online right now, and you don't even have to be in this place to receive the tongues. What you got to do is simply say, Lord, I believe your word. I believe your word is for me, and I receive right now by faith. I believe that you're good. I believe that tongues are of me, and I believe that I have now this prayer language. It's as simple as that. What do I got to do? What's the requirements? You got to be saved. That's the only requirement. If you're saved, that's the only requirement to receive this next gift. So I encourage you today, if you're in here today and you've never received, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, according to your word, Holy Spirit, you know, and you are here right now, just as in the upper room, you were over. And I thank you that you were over right now. And even the place, people that are watching online, wherever they are watching, at whatever country, whatever platform, Lord, I thank you that you were there with them right now. So according to your word, you said that these signs shall follow those who believe. You said if any two come together in agreement, they will have whatever they agree upon. And so, Lord, I agree right now. I agree for this special prayer language to come upon them right now 
in Jesus' name. All you have to do is receive. Just like you're breathing the air, the oxygen in the room, you just breathe and receive in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And, Lord, I thank you even for taking people's own personal prayer and language even to the next level, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the next level in the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you that we will be a church full of people that believe your message. Because we believe your message, we thank you for your power, your mighty supernatural dunamis power flowing in and through our lives. We thank you for the word that has come forth today. Lord, Lord, we know it's been teaching, but Lord, it's even been challenging and maybe even correcting in people's lives. But Lord, you said that you do that to those that you love. And because you are a good father, you love us unconditionally. And so I give you all the thanks, the praise, the honor, and the glory for this day in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Brother Moreland, who's next? Amen. Praise God. Amen. For those of you that prayed the prayer and are believing God, amen. It's like Pastor Scott was saying, it can, you, tongues can manifest any time, any place, amen? And, and it's as your spirit gets in line, it's not something that takes over your body. You have to yield to it. But amen, receive now in Jesus' name. And it might not manifest totally now, but receive it now, amen? Amen. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and uh, take up an offering. It is giving time, amen? It is a very exciting time. Amen. So if you would like to have an offering envelope, go ahead and raise your hands. For those of you who are watching online, the information is on the screen. Uh, all of the uh, ways that we can give. We have several secure ways up there that you can give and get involved. Amen. We thank all of our online givers. Amen. Also, uh, we have our Change for Change up here. Uh, that if you have change, you can bring it up uh, at the end of service. And uh, we're going to sow that into missions, amen. We are trusting God that every penny sown is a soul for the kingdom of God, amen. Amen. Well, Minister Cookie, do you have a scripture? Awesome, 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 awesome. Minister Cookie's going to come up and share a scripture. There's the mic. I've never needed it. Oh, you do need it. <laughs> So Isaiah 53, 1, who has believed our report and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? We've heard that this morning. And so it's up to us. Do we believe the word of the Lord that when we sow seed, you know, one of the worst things that I've ever heard, and I know people try to sound really humble and I'm not judging them. I'm just observing them, right? But you've heard people say, well, I just give and I don't expect to receive. I just give because I love the Lord. Well, listen, no, no. Who has believed the report? We are sowing seed. And no farmer sows seeds without expecting a harvest. Amen? And so our good heavenly father, today is Father's Day, and we've honored the father of this house but think about our heavenly father, amen, how good he is, that he has given us a way to prosper. We sow seed and we expect a harvest. And it's great. It is greater than anything that we can imagine or hope because that's what the Bible says, that our God not only supplies our needs, he gives us the desires and secret petitions of our heart. Do you like that part? secret petitions that no one else knows anything about. And it says, again, that he loves us so intensely. You know how you, oh, you know how your father loves you, right? You know how your father loves you. I mean, I remember, you know, always uh, growing up in San Diego, um, I, mommy was wonderful, but I always felt protected and defended when daddy was home when father was home. So our good heavenly father protects, offend, uh, protects, defends, avenges us. He has cured us. He's given us right Holy Spirit. Amen. 
And so today we sow because we love him, and because we love him, we're getting the harvest. Amen. Amen. Receive your harvest. Raise your hand and receive that harvest in the name of Jesus. And we send the angels forth to bring it in Jesus' name. Okay. Roll it, please. No matter how old we are, we always remember what our dads say and do. My dad is more like Jesus than your dad. No, -uh. My dad doesn't let anybody eat any food until we pray for it. My dad prays for one minute every day. You know what? Our church has pancakes. This is what my sister and mom use for their blush. My dad says that mean kids never know what they're talking about. Because their parents don't know what they're talking about either. My dad says to punch meanies in the face. Then my mom says, don't ever do that. And my dad goes to time out. <laughs> <laughs> my dad's beard is itchy whenever he kisses me. My dad takes me to church so we could learn to be just like Jesus. My daddy prays for me. Then he makes me stop talking and go to bed. Then I get a flashlight and read my comic book. That's a sin. He's sinning. No, I'm not. Sinner. No, I'm not. R2. 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 My dad said that if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it. My dad never stays mad at me. My dad taught me to forgive. Because Jesus forgives us every time we ask. I want a mohawk. I wish I had hair. It's okay. Your hair will probably grow back. Thanks for being our dads for all our lives. Amen. Please raise your hand if you have an, not given. Okay. And ushers, please come forward. You know, in the United States, Mother's Day is remembered more than Father's Day. Did you know that? Yeah. So we are the believers, and we have to change things around. God has given us that power, right? Because our Heavenly Father, right, we need to change the structure of what's going on. We need to bring fathers back into their rightful place. And mothers, mothers, even those who are single mothers, and I'm a single parent now, Let's continue to dignify the fathers. If there's not a natural father, please, I mean, there have been faults, there have been flaws, but don't put those fathers down to the children, amen? Because we're praying that those fathers will come up. And we're people of faith, amen? Amen. Nothing shall be impossible, amen? And so today we pray for reconciliation. We pray that the fathers come back to the children in the name of Jesus. We call them back in Jesus' name. And now, Father, we thank you for this offering. You are such a good heavenly father. You've given us so many great and precious promises. And, Father, we believe them by faith. We say by faith. But we, and by faith, Father, we thank you for our harvest. We send the angels forth to bring us our harvest immediately. And, Father, for every father today, Father, we proclaim, Father, the blessing of Abraham upon these fathers. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus for each father that serves you. And we call back, Father, those fathers who've fallen by the wayside. And we say, Father, that the structure of this country will be changed, that Father's Father will come forth, and that this nation will be what it's supposed to be, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, minister. Amen. Let me help you down here. Amen. So uh, I know it's late, but we do have some important announcements. Uh, we have several things coming up uh, this next weekend. On Saturday from 10-11, uh, on June the 24th, we have a Right to Life organization out here at the courthouse. We will be celebrating one year of the passing of the uh, Roe versus Wade uh, um, 
you know what it is. So uh, Pastor Scott is going to be praying uh, at the beginning, and then he'll be also ending the meeting. So we're going to be out there from 10 to 11 out here at the courthouse uh, to celebrate that. Amen. Uh, also, we have birthday celebrations. If you had a birthday in April, May, or June, uh, pastors are going to be celebrating with you if you are 18 or older. If you are married, you can bring your spouse, and it's going to be this next Sunday from 5 to 6.30 p.m. at their house. Make sure that you sign up uh, RSVP on the app if you are planning on being there. Also, July 4th, stay tuned because we have an all-hands-on-deck outreach that we will be doing right out here. Uh, we are going to be putting up our inflatables, and, and we need to have lots of help to run those, and, and we're going to be giving out popsicles, doing all kinds of fun things on July the 4th right out here. So sign up on the app for that if you can help. Also, uh, also, don't forget, don't show up on Thursday because we're going to not be here on Thursday. So uh, we will be resuming our midweek services in the fall. And so, uh, uh, so last Thursday was our, our last Thursday for, for now. Amen. Uh, also, we have a water baptisms coming up on July the 9th. Make sure you sign up for that. Let me know if you're interested in being water baptized. I won't get into all that, but I'll give you instructions if you're interested in being water baptized. We also have our pool party coming up July 23rd, which is a little ways away. But just to give you a heads up, that will be July 23rd from 5.30 to 8.30. Also, dads, there are goodie bags for you in the foyer. Uh, make sure you grab one on your way out. And also, there is a photo. You can have your photo taken out there as well, dads, uh, for Father's Day. So make sure you can do that also on your way out. Amen. And that's all I have. God bless you all. Have an awesome day today.